In 2020, we made the huge decision to sell our home in the lower 48 and move north to Alaska to live a way of life free from the hustle and bustle of big city life. Join us here as we share our everyday adventures living free in Alaska. Well, good morning. Today is Saturday, the 18th of February. It is officially day two of the pro class of the Iron Dog race. And I just thought I'd show you how we are tracking the racers because obviously we're not going to Nome ourselves. So I have here on my computer. All right, so here we are at the Iron Dog website. It's irondograce.org. And this is their tracking page. And we can see everybody on the race course. Right here, Team 77, that's the ambassador group. They've gone ahead and they're already on the sound. Um, I wouldn't be surprised looking at the distance they've gone. They will be going into Nome today or... I don't know if they're going to do the upper loop on the they, northbound. They do the Cotspew loop on the northbound. On the northbound. Okay, so they're going to come up here, do the loop, and then go into Nome. But the yellow markers, that's the rest of the expedition class. So I'm going to zoom in here. We're going to go find Randy. If you remember Randy, we interviewed him at the meet and greet. And I believe... Oh, they're not in the front runners group. So we're going to just go back here. Oh, here he is. Right there, Randy Bedard, 51C. Four minutes ago, he was running 52 miles an hour, and he's at mile marker 655. Uh, but as you can see here, here is the running of the pro class at the moment. Looks like team two is out in the lead. They're going about 40 miles an hour at mile marker 385. That was reported 14 minutes ago. And then if we go and look for, here's, here's Leah and Jake, the team we're rooting for. Right now they're at uh, mile marker 337. Where is Axted and Ol Olsted? Oh, team. team seven. They are in second place <coughs> currently. Oh, good, good. They are at mile marker 380 going 24 miles an hour. So that's how we track them. And uh, this is kind of neat. You can see elevation gains, where they're at, what they're currently doing. Uh, that's actually really cool to see. All right, so it is now time to head to Anchorage. This is a busy weekend for us. Today we're going to go into Anchorage and see the boat show. Right, from snow toys to water toys in, in just a couple of days. Here we go. Yep. All right, so we're going to take you with us. So right. let's head to Anchorage. Free parking on Saturday. Free parking on Saturday downtown Anchorage. You gotta like that. Kitty corner to the Denina, Denina Center. That's where the boat show is. Heading in there now. Yeah, for two 
people. Our table is a little large. I like our table. I know. I like our table, too. So here we are on a uh, Raider 30-foot offshore, or 300 offshore, they call it. Uh, very similar to our boat, what we have. Um, the cockpit set up, or the, the cabin set up a little bit differently. Um, but kind of a similar boat. Back, big back deck for fishing and a nice comfy forward uh, cab and for, I mean, there's a V-Bird down there, you can sleep on it, you can set it over nights. Uh, we have the head right back here, a little table right up here, and, and then two comfortable seats for the captain and operator. So it's a nice little, nicely set up boat. It's a wrap, folks. <laughs> All of a maybe an hour and a half inside. Well, so that was yeah. that was an Anchorage boat show. Yeah, it's uh, you know small, sweet, and simple. Um, a lot you know fishing catered, um, fishing style boats, made in the aluminum boats, uh, outboard motors. Outboard motors. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not your typical lower forty eight boat show at all. No, nothing like the <laughs> Miami boat show that oh we gosh. went to a couple of years it ago. Takes days to go through. <laughs> yeah, this an hour. Yeah, but um, but no, it's nice. We saw some good stuff and and um, take, I don't know. I think the sportsman show coming up next month That's is gonna a hold uh, a lot more vendor opportunities and purchase opportunities correct we we made it out of here without spending a dime no. except admission so yeah 10 bucks to get in so there you go <laughs> it was worth it though it's our donation it's fun to see all right well we're in anchorage so we're gonna go do anchorage, anchorage things stuff. what is that <laughs> probably leave sooner than later <laughs> all right <laughs> take care <laughs> She's on like Norma. Sophie, what are you doing? <laughs> Go rap rap. <laughs> hey here guys, we're here with a bunch of our friends, uh, Mike and his family, a couple of his kids, and uh, we're gonna head out to the uh, Willow Carnival. Um, the main event we want to see there is called the Outhouse Races. So you can only imagine what might happen there. I just hope they're empty. <laughs> <laughs> And today, Miss Sophie's going for a ride with us. Hi. She's like, Mom, shut the lid. I'm cold. <laughs> out of Willow. Uh, we're almost to the carnival and so far a great ride. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Marks. Get set. Go. 
I mean, we came here for the fire, or we came here for the aisle for instance. There was two. I was hoping a little bit more competition going on, but hey, all right, it's okay. We're having a good time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Carnival. We've done it. Check that off the yeah. checklist. A lot of fun, just community orientated yep. activities going on all this weekend and next weekend. Well, yeah, you saw the the, the uh, outhouse races. There's also some kid dog sled races um, and other uh, cross country ski races and, and fat tire bike runs and all this and that. So a whole bunch of stuff going on out here this, using the trail system out here that we're still working on. This weekend was more geared toward non-motorized yes. events and next weekend is the motorized events. So a lot more snow machine activities. Right. So, But yeah, a lot of fun. Right. We're about to ride back home now. Uh, Sophie. Sophie just chilling. <laughs> She's chilling in my chest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've got a good 30 mile ride or so, and uh, it turned out a beautiful, beautiful day. day. Yep. So yep. it's going to be a nice yep. afternoon ride. Might be, yeah, depending on timing, and we may uh, get a little darkness coming home, but that's okay. We got light. We've got all the time in the world. Yep. Oh my God. So I just came out. Let the dog out. Look at these swirls. Oh my gosh. Absolutely freaking amazing. Oh my gosh. at all. This is so strong right now.
Good afternoon, folks. How are you today? So we got some information from a viewer that uh, maybe some of you want to see some more of our cooking videos, or maybe more specifically, smoking videos. What we what we put on our smoker. Uh, so hey, tonight's a great night. I've got some country ribs here. Uh, I had them in the marinade for the last three and a half, four hours. It was a uh, let's see if I can remember orange juice, Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, garlic, and molasses. I put the country ribs in a vacuum pack bag and vacuum pack it down and threw it in the refrigerator for a bit. They're out now. I uh, disposed of the marinade and I just rubbed them down with yellow mustard because it's a good binder and also adds a little bit of flavor to the meat. So that's the country ribs after marinade with yellow mustard. Next step is to season it, rub it with your favorite rub. These guys here, Patriot Barbecue, are very local to us. They're here up, at, uh, up in Houston, Alaska, and we're gonna try this, this rub for the first time. So Patriot Barbecue actually is going to cater our rally uh, this summer at the Rendezvous on the River, this summer. So that's gonna be pretty awesome. So we're gonna try them out now. Sweet and spicy. That's gonna be good, but not too spicy. I think Stacy's had this one in the past, and it wasn't too spicy for her. She's the one that doesn't like spice very much, but I think her she's growing with it. She, she's getting getting more and more used to. It. No, I've learned to just shut up. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta rinse the hand off. What do you think, so? Yep. That looks smacking good. Mm -hmm. So not only is Patriot Barbecue hosting our arrival dinner at the Rendezvous on the River, but they actually have a food truck here in the Matsu Valley. You can find them in Wasilla and Palmer and everywhere in between. And my God, their food is delicious. They have some of the best pulled pork. Their brisket's amazing. Ribs are good. Mm. And with that peach cobbler, I think it was that dessert. Oh. <laughs> So look for the uh, Patriot Barbecue food truck when you're up here this summer. It's a good place. Alrighty, welcome to my Rectech smoker. This is a uh, wood-fired smoker, so a pellet smoker. That's my big hopper, holds about 40 pounds of pellets. Don't, don't be all nasty on me. It's not the cleanest inside, but you know what? That adds flavor to everything I make. I just want to make sure it's clean enough. Start the thing up. I'm going to 225. I also have an app I can do this with on my phone. On my phone, I can pull up the Rectech Rec Tech app and then uh, tell the thing to start. And it does, but I like to be out here to watch it start, make sure everything goes okay. Especially in the wintertime when it's cold, things happen weird. So it's going to. Smoke up here in a little bit. Look at that. That's just 21 degrees and beautiful right now. This is, this is it's an amazing day. I, I guess we kind of got used to the temperature a little bit. I mean, you can walk outside in short, short, short sleeve t shirts. Oh, hey, Spirit. Oh, where'd you go? Spirit. She's on ignore. Hey, hi. Hello. Yeah, she's totally ignore. If we only had smell a vision. Oh yeah, this smoke smells really good. It's the uh, Rectech Competition Blend. I believe is what they call it. Um, red oak, cherry, maple, and hickory. I believe is the blend. Uh, really good, really good wood blend. Waiting spirit. Yeah, it's gonna be good eating tonight. We're eating good tonight, aren't we? Yeah, we're eating good tonight. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, we're going outside. Yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to be outside. What are you doing? All right, the fire pot's just now starting to come to full light. You can see all the nice smoke coming out of there. You hear the flames starting to roar up. Uh, once that flame catches full, I'll close the lid and then let the oven, let, let the uh, smoker warm up. 
<clears throat> well, smoker's at 225 degrees. I think it's time to put the meat on the grill. Do you approve? Someday we'll get that installed. Hmm. Just needs to do a little better here in Alaska. Do you approve? Yeah. I know you do. Alrighty. Mmm. Looking good. This shelf right here, I like it a lot. It's coming so handy just for these needs. Nice. So I came out here just a bit ago and scraped the grates off so they're kind of nice and clean now. These are nice and tender. These food are going to be good. Alrighty. See you later. So I, this is a smoker. We don't need to open up the lid. We don't need to <coughs> look at things just to watch it cook. I've got the probes in there and I can monitor, monitor the probes through my cell phone. And I've got my cell phone set to notify me when the temperature gets 135 degrees internal on the meat. At about that point, I need to check it to make sure it's done or to see if it's done. It should be. It may take up to three, three and a half hours. So it's gonna be a bit. See you later. Time to go check my meat. The probes inside are saying in there are saying it's it's 150 or so now. 135 wasn't enough. I need I don't know why I think 135 was the right temperature. It was not the right temperature. There's a light. They're probably done. They feel done. That was a little soft. They're not supposed to be rare, you know. They're supposed to be like nice. Mm. Mm -mm. They're, they're country rate, you know. Ooh! <laughs> Sample. Ooh, that's a fatty piece. That's good. <clears throat> we'll go a little longer. There are some. It's, it's kind of meat. It's kind of. Called a country rib, but it's not always a rib meat. Sometimes it's just a chuck roast that's cut into weird strips. And if it's a chuck roast, then it definitely needs to be um, cooked to a higher temperature to to uh, dissolve all those connective tissues and the tough stuff in there. So we'll let them go a little bit longer. They'll be delicious. I think we got to do some uh, potatoes, maybe. Yeah, let's get some bakers going. Small bakers. What time is it right now? Uh, yeah, it is almost six o'clock and it's not dark out. It's still light out here. Loving I it. I love it. I love it. It is time to pull the ribs and sauce them. And then I'll put them back on for a few minutes and then uh, probably with another 15 minutes, minutes or so, they'll be done done. So let's go out and grab the ribs and I'll throw some sauce on them. And come back in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Nice. Nice. Delicious. <laughs> so we have Patriot Gold, which is a uh, mustard-based barbecue sauce. Very delicious. I like this one a lot. We also have a. Uh, B52, which is more of your vinegar base, but it's hot. This one's not very hot, so let's try it out. <laughs> I'll keep my comments to myself. 
This is a G Ridge. And again, this is Patriot Barbecue, right? This is Patriot Barbecue. Yes. I mean, if you're going to go Patriot, might as well go Patriot all around. Not questioning, but I'm questioning. Because of rub with the sauce? Is that what you're questioning? Yeah. But you know, they're all. Uh, I've always done ribs with a rub. I'll do a mustard base. I'm sorry, yeah, I'll do, like pork ribs. I'll do a mustard base and then load it with uh, like a, a, a trigger pork rub, whatever the hell it is. And then I always sauce them. So, I mean, ribs always get rubbed and sauced. You don't have to, but it's just a good option. Juicier, deliciouser. More flavor. Okay. Back up. Ooh, let me put a lid on this though because. Oh, you're going out again? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna put them on back on to tighten up. So, how long are they gonna go back on? Another 10 or so. All right. Alrighty, time has come. I think they're done. Well, they're done. Yeah. Alrighty, here we go. Woohoo! That looks kind of delicious. Let's go eat. Baked potatoes. One for you. One for me. Like your little stove there, babe. It's a baby stove. We haven't upgraded. Well, yeah. Maybe by the Maybe end of the month. Maybe by the end of the month. Well, that's what we were told. Who knows? Who knows? It's just one of those things. Ordered in July of 21. Here we are, February 23. We're just very fortunate to have a loaner. I mean, we, you know, our sales representative at Allen and Peterson has been amazing to us. I only need one. Well, you're gonna get two. Because oh. you're gonna like it. What are you drinking tonight? Everybody seems to want to know. Tonight, this is, uh, what is this? You see the bottle. Tonight, we have Old Forester 1920. And it's kind of upsetting because... You killed it. It's all gone. Oh, well, you, you sal salvaged no, I, a little. It, it, it all, all the drops made it in. <laughs> all right. It's a good one. It's a little, it's a little hot. 115 proof, but good stuff. Okay, babe. Dig in. I do exist. Hello, everyone. I love when Chef Gary is in the house. I'm in the house every day. We are trying to eat at home more. Oops, no oh, darn it. Oh. It's horrible. <laughs> mm. No, it's too bad. I'm sorry, guys. Nothing for you. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Shaney and Dustin. Thank you very much. You guys flavored this stuff up really nice. Four thumbs up. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thanks again for watching as we catch up the vlog to real time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified when we post again. And lastly, we hope you'll join us again next time here on Living Free Alaska.